Hello, and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Carol Jenkins, and this is Black America. Today, we're speaking with Abdel Salam, Dance Africa's artistic director at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and also the executive artistic director and co-founder of Forces of Nature Dance Theater. He's known for his work around the world, which has earned him numerous awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award, or maybe several of those. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you're still a kid, so, you know, there are many more in the offering. I'm going to receive that, Carol. Thank you, Thank you so much for calling me a kid. That's, no, that's, that's I, quite wonderful. Well, for me, you know, almost everybody's a kid. Right, I'm right, I, I am so right. glad you're here I, because I am a new fan. I don't know how in the world... This Kwanzaa, I finally, the last one, I finally got to see your regeneration program at the Apollo mm -hmm. with all of those dancers, with all of those kids, you know, with a wonderful program. So thank you so much. I've been raving ever since. It's our pleasure. And, and regeneration night uh, uh, um, is, what, 42 years old? We started when the company was, was founded in 1981, but this is our, was our 17th year at the Apollo Theater. So. Right, and you were saying, sorry it was so long, it was three, what, three hours? It's about three it? hours. I needed four, you know? Ah. It was, ah. <laughs> ah. it was just fantastic. Yeah, my producer was fussing at me because we normally try to keep it at two hours and 15 minutes, but it was the first performance coming back from COVID. Ah. Uh, and normally we would have two performances, we condensed two performances into one. Um, you know, kind of, I guess, is a favor to the, to the audience, but now people were saying we needed to do both shows. So. Sure. So talk to yeah. us about what happened during the pandemic, you know, with a dance company that's used to traveling around the world, mm -hmm. suddenly sidelined, uh, well, virtual. It, what, how did that work out? That's a great question, Carol. Um, it could have been a nightmare, but it wasn't. Um, and I think it wasn't because um, when I was having conversations with uh, my producers at BAM uh, and we were preparing for uh, an interview of, about the effects of COVID, uh, I said to uh, my producer, you know, this may be an opportunity uh, for us to explore a genre that we normally don't and that's digital performing. That's performing and doing mm -hmm. uh, uh, television and film. Um, and I said, so for those of us who are, who are or theater rats, you know, who love the performing in person and, and love the theater, this may be an opportunity for us to explore an entirely different world. Um, and in addition to the work being able to be disseminated to thousands of people that normally would not get a chance exactly. to see it, and even other countries and internationally. Exactly. Um, there are angles and views and visions of the performance because in camera you have close-ups, right? And you <laughs> right. have things in the camera can sure. explore. So, it, so it, I, uh, yes, we lost some people. My, my, my wife's um, mother passed, um, yeah. you know, with other illnesses, but I think COVID was a factor and people that were very close to us um, joined the ancestors. Uh, but um, but so do you think that you will uh, continue the virtual? I mean, like most of us who started having virtual office meetings and conducting life that way, we still do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's a reluctance almost to get back to the real mm -hmm. to the real life. But for you, that dance blood, that life blood, is in the in the hall itself, in the theater. Yes, my preference is the living theater. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, whether it's the work, the professional work, or our arts education work, um, uh, my co-founder, uh, uh, Deli Husbands and I, and my, my wife, Diane, we refer to the work as the living book. Mm. Um, and so it's an opportunity uh, to take things which are normally conceptual, uh, that normally could be um, theoretical, you know, as a construct, um, and... Um, and share it mm. with the audience with, you know, in a living experience, an experience that's alive with the human body. Yeah, one of the things uh, I love yeah, about your yeah. work is the spiritual yeah. aspect of it. We, I saw that night and in looking at some of the videos, mm -hmm. in fact, we have a clip of some of your phenomenal dancers. Why don't we play that now and we'll talk on the other side. Okay.
<laughs> just amazing. I, re I received that. <laughs> uh, right, right. Do, please do receive that. You're all, all accolades. Uh, and I understand that you do some of the designing of the costumes as well, is that? Yes. When I was in school at Lehman, I had to do some costume illustration in order to Times, sometimes earn some extra money, and so I used to was Judy Deering's uh, designer, ah, il illustrator rather. Right, right. Yeah, she she was. Uh, what did Judy do? So Color you girl. trained? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you trained with mm -hmm. the with the best. Well, I so did. so mm -hmm. now these two, we're going to talk about the Brooklyn Academy of Music in a little bit because mm -hmm. that I mm -hmm. see that the tickets are all. It's May, and mm -hmm. that event is almost sold out. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> uh, talk to us about how you came to dance and how you built this company. And uh, one of the things that was so terrific about the Kwanzaa event was the children from the Harlem Children's Zone mm -hmm. that you train mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. So first, tell us how you became a dancer. And it was 1968. Uh, I was accepted um, uh, into the SEEK program at Lehman. Uh, Lehman was Hunter. Right, and right. Well, you're part of the know. family, right? right? We're all, you know, the right. city university, right? Right, We're right, right. Absolutely. And um, I met my dance mother when I was running around the reservoir in phys ed. Her name was Joan Miller. Joan was, uh, Joan was the first archetypical, uh, I sometimes like to refer to her as the first black female postmodernist, um, part of the LGBTQ community, um, used to drive a red truck. <laughs> uh, and, um, and this is in the 60s? This was in the 60s. Right, right. right. And she did amazing uh, social political work that a lot of times addressed some of the issues that we were dealing with at the time. Uh, uh, she was an av avid um, what's, uh, student and disclaimer of traditional marriage. I thought that was interesting. and We used to have big arguments and debates about that. I've been married, what, what almost 40 years, you know, right. so, so that was something that I didn't really understand. Uh, she didn't have children, but she, but she believed that uh, every woman um, should have the right to define her, themselves and herself as she so chose to do, chose to do. And she was influential uh, in getting you to... To dance, yeah. Oh, certainly, yeah. Um, uh, she, um, uh, she had a, an, um, designed an amazing program at Lehman College. Probably, I, I would say it, it was almost a rival to, to Juilliard's uh, faculty. We had um, people from the Limon Company, uh, from the Graham Company, from... Uh, Paul Sansardo's company, Chuck Davis, Baba Chuck Davis was on faculty, and I, you know, worked with um, Juan Antonio, Louis Falco, Nadine Ravine. Um, uh, she saw me being someone that was physical, but possibly had a, 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 a potential to have presence on stage, and so I, um, I became an apprentice in my first year of studying with her. Um, she and my other teachers thought I had a, 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 some exceptional raw talent. I was not trained that, that well at the time. And I kept on studying. Uh, and before you know it, in a very short period of time, I was apprenticing and dancing um, with professional companies. I don't know how that happened That's great. as yep. quickly as it did, right. uh, but it but was not for Joan. And also, Baba Chuck, um, I, I would not be in, in this profession. And I will say that. Joan is my contemporary dance mother. She is the person that, that gave birth to me mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. dancer. But Baba Chuck was the one that introduced me to the, the dance and work of Africa and its diaspora. Right. So that was a dual uh, kind of track that, that I um, was passionately involved with, and, 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 and it dominated my life. Right, and, and mm -hmm. so this idea of starting a dance theater that predominantly uh, pulls from that African dance. Mm -hmm. You know, those crazy drummers you have, those are your, <laughs> yeah. your, your drummers who are just fabulous. And I was asking you before we started recording, I could not believe that you had that many people on stage doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, perfectly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, so you're a wonderful dance master, I would say, you know, you get the step right or else, you know, so talk to us about that process of you designing a dance and then having all of these people do it so magnificently. Well, well second, uh, again, I received that, <laughs> that dance master accolade that you gave me. I, I think master is a relative term uh, because we are always striving and searching for the next level of the art and the craft. Um, that being said, uh, the simple answer is uh, 
repetition mm -hmm. and rehearsal. It's doing something over and over and over again and repeating it uh, 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 so many times that, you, that performing is not, while performing is a living intelligence, the process of performing is, is not an intellectual decision in the moment, although you have to do that sometimes when something happens. Um, it's muscle memory and your body takes over. And so the language that you're developing for your company, um, the, the movement, the, the, the texture, the nuance, uh, the design is something that you have to reach for within the rehearsal process so that when you get on stage, you know, it happens right. instantaneously. Um, so, because I did ask you, I mean, mm -hmm. do you write this down? I mean, is your are your dances written down, and uh, it's in the it's in the muscle memory of your dancers. Mm -hmm. So there are two approaches to creating creating work, as, as I think as as most choreographers know. There is the, you know, the, the abstract, the intellectual side. So there are sometimes where you can sit down and create, and you have a vision of a concept, mm -hmm. and you develop that concept. Uh, on, on paper. I've done that a lot with, with Dance Africa and some of the works that I've done there. Um, but a lot of times I would just come into the studio mm. and start to move. Uh, sometimes thematically I haven't, I haven't even decided what the direction of the movement uh, will take me. I don't know where it, uh, it's, it's going to happen initially, but there is that intrinsic voice, that ancestral voice, you know, that voice that comes to the, 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 the living experience of the environment that we live in. And, um, and if, if I believe in consciousness, and so if, I believe if you're, if you're in tuned, you know, uh, with, if you're in tune with consciousness, then um, whatever, whatever word you want to use, ancestors, God, spirit, uh, fate, you know, it, uh, you form this um, alliance, this alignment with that inner voice. And so the work comes out. Um, and I'll give you a quick example. My mother, um, who was the director of Greater Harlem Nursing Home, uh, in the 80s. She passed in 1989, but she directed, uh, she was the head nurse at an emergency room in Harlem in the 60s. And I used to go watch the struggle and the turmoil of that job. I watched that job actually um, affect her life. You know, she became an alcoholic and eventually, you know, she died. Um, so the fascinating thing was those living experiences of just watching her in the emergency room mm and watching her take care of patients and the heart machine and the sound of the ambul ambulances. It was something that when she passed um, as a catharsis, uh, I did a, uh, created a work called October Ashes Living Doves because she was born in October, her middle name was Dove. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the sections that became the seminal work was ER. Mm -hmm. And it was about, an, about her experiences in the emergency room. And so you, as you watch her push this table, the table is a gurney, it's a heart machine, it's an, examin an, an examination room, you know, the sounds of all of that come together. And by the end of the piece, where she started out as the caregiver, now you, you, you no longer know whether or not she's the caregiver uh -huh. or the person who is a, 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 you know, is a victim. Um, wow. And so th those living experiences are, for me as a choreographer and as a director, whether it's with children or adults, it's about designing work that has healing properties to it. You said that you enjoyed uh, Kwanzaa Regeneration Night. Right, right and, but it was mm -hmm. healing. It was about healing. It was healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Oh, we, like we the agree. show, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> so we agree. Well, talk to me about the kids because mm -hmm. they were a highlight because they were mm -hmm. so young and mm -hmm. also so good. Mm -hmm. And your company uh, works with the children, a Harlem Children's Zone. Yes. In what, you, you teach 67 classes? It's about 60, 65 to 67 classes a week. A week, a right, week. with every the day. kids in Harlem. In, every, every day. Mm -hmm. And you go to, you, you take uh, teachers, you go to their school and, you know. Right, well I have a staff that does that now. Uh, uh, Jeff Canada, <laughs> the founder, Jeff said, Ted said to me about 20 years ago, Abdel, I'm gonna take you off of the front line. You have been on the front line in the trenches. You've been a field general for many oh. years. So let's take some of your dancers, you know, work with them and raise them, you know, give them, uh, help them understand the protocols of arts education, what we need to, to do in order to empower young people. Um, I worked in, in, humans, in uh, human services and, and, um, and, and youth education and empowerment for many years also too, during the day while I worked with the company at night. Right, right. Uh, and uh, I was fortunate to uh, identify talented people who understand how to understand academic pedagogy, you know, but at the same time, you know, we're able to give 
this amazing talent that they possess, uh, share that with these young people. Um, any any uh, dancers come out of uh, that group of uh, who who took it up as a profession? Not yet. Um, my principal and um, amazing um, uh, hip hop choreographer Jay Ponder, uh, she and I took a group of young uh, people to South Africa in 2019, right before the pandemic uh, hit, and um, they performed uh, at, uh, at the Soweto Theater ah. um, and also in Durban. Uh, and they wore South Africa out. Um, and it was a combination of doing African work and hip hop, a little bit of contemporary um, at that time. And uh, that was based upon a relationship that I had with uh, Duma and Dlovo. He was the one that brought Sarafina. Right, uh, oh yes, United of States. course. Right. I think uh, Sarafina is coming back, right? It's did supposed you? to come back, right. And I think I heard that at your show. Right? Well, <laughs> wait, 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 well, let me see, did I say that? Um, right, we haven't signed the contract Boza, yet, I right. Think Boza, Boza did say that, that's Boza right. Boza Rivers. Boza, yeah, you know, Boza and I have a great relationship. Right, said that yeah. Serafina was coming back to mm -hmm. Broadway, we hope, mm -hmm. which yeah. will be fantastic. So you, you have traveled all over the world. Uh, with I've been quite dance, a few places, yeah. Dance, uh -huh. co dance uh -huh. companies, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I saw the list of supporters that you have, really remarkable, mm -hmm. you know, consistent over the years. Talk mm -hmm. about that because You've got the spiritual, the healing, the, all of that going on, but you have to raise money mm -hmm. in order to fund your company and, and do all of this. So we're at a point right now where we, we have rejoined the funding cycle, the funding circle. Um, and that's why uh, when you have those different people that have funded us, it says throughout the years. When we started uh, in the 80s uh, and maybe early 90s, yes, it was the NEA and NIFA and New York State Council uh, on the arts, um, and they said they the National Endowments, uh, um, National Endowment of the Arts. Okay. Um, and then uh, uh, we left the funding game and we started, and this is uh, M Mickey Shepard, who's on my advisory board, she said something that was very important, and Laura Greer also, who uh, is the uh, senior uh, producer um, uh, at the Apollo. We did something that was very unusual. We marketed and sold our product in order to make money rather than being funded. Hmm. And that was how we survived. Mm -hmm. So when a lot of people lost funding, right. it didn't make a difference to us because what kept us alive was the product. Right. But then somebody said to us about 10 years ago, there's a considerable amount of resources out here. You may want to reconsider joining uh, the, the funding game. And so uh, uh, again, then uh, I, I can't remember where we were. We were either in Philadelphia. Um, I'm on the board of directors of the International Association of Blacks and Dance, mm -hmm. and we were performing there, and I, and I believe it was um, the president or, or one of the brass of, of, um, of the Gilman, Howard Gilman Foundation, um, and they came and saw us, and they said, we've never seen forces of nature before, like you said. Yeah, right, it you was know? my, and I you was know. bowled over, yeah, right? Yeah. You're right about your, you have a fabulous yeah. product. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, how long have you been around? Oh, really? About 30 some <laughs> ideas, right? And so they we, they took us on. So we're that they're one that of our is, new funders. And, that is and that is fantastic. NEA, NIFA, you know. So it's all coming coming back together. Right, yeah. right, mm -hmm. right. Well, talk to us about the Brooklyn Academy of of Music, BAM. This year, our guest company is the National Dance Theater of Ghana, and I wanted to do that because um, we had we have not had Ghana at. Um, BAM in a number of years, maybe only one time in 46 years. Really? Um, so this is the year for Ghana. This is the year for Ghana and also uh, uh, it's the Restoration Youth, Youth Arts Ensemble. Uh, it's Spirit Walkers, uh, Dance Africa Spirit Walkers, which is a division of, of forces. Forces, uh, right. right. Um, and um, um, and the orchestra, or spelled A-R-K, or orchestra? The orchestra, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I borrowed that from Sun Ra. You know, um, uh, uh, I thought that that was one of the most amazing words that, that was ever uh, 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 developed for the English language, the orchestra, because it gives you the understanding that music takes you on this journey, you know, on this sonic arc, you know, of listening and empowerment and, 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 and emotional uh, response. And um, you put that together from from musicians from around the country uh, who, or around the city. Yeah, well, the, the, the concept was to take the musicians in last year's Dance Africa right. from seven different companies. Talk about another long show. Right. 
uh, and put them all together and form this uh, per percussion orchestra. We will not do the orchestra this year, but I will come back and do it again um, next year. Right. Uh, well, the, the, the drum, year. I mean, the, the music, uh, I mean, again, the spiritual lifting, mm -hmm. really, of, mm -hmm. uh, of all mm -hmm. of that, the rhythmic, uh, you know, uh, you really put on a, a fabulous show. So at, at the... The Africa Fest uh, is yes, what, Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. several days, and there's yes. a bazaar outside. That's I cannot believe, you know, you've opened a whole new world, you know. Oh, yeah. Felt, you yeah. Know. Well, I'm going to make sure that we get you there, <laughs> you, you and your entire staff this year. Um, I, I would be remiss to say, uh, if I didn't share, that uh, Dance Africa was founded by my uh, African dance father, Baba Chuck Davis, Ibaye, you know, he's now an ancestor. And uh, it was founded in 1977. And I and other members of the Chuck Davis Dance Company at the time, we performed at the first Dance Africa. Uh, and it was just our company in 77. 1978, Chuck brought in five other companies, uh, companies from uh, around the city, uh, all dedicated to uh, the work of Africa and its diaspora. Um, and it has continued from that point up until today. Uh, Baba passed maybe seven years ago, and um, I was on a short list. Yes, and you uh, to, assume directorship, uh, you know, and right? And assume directorship after much, much right. vetting, and many interviews. Well, uh, and so this is my, this will be my seventh year. Wow, yeah. wow! And mm -hmm. what I love about this is that you are a Harlem boy. We were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, our Harlem ancestors in a way. You know, the Cotton Club, the mm -hmm. Apollo, the all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. You know, sharing those mm -hmm. those experiences. How does that influence everything that you do? So my grandfather was a, a comedian. Um, he was like, like Abbott and Costello. He was, uh, Abbott was the straight man and Costello was the, um, w you know, was the right. one that, that, that received the jokes and, and made it humorous. So he was the one that used to feed his partner, uh, uh, Bert Howell. Uh, his name was Buddy Bowser. And, um, uh, and I was born, I always share this because I'm not embarrassed, I was born Milton Pryor Bowser IV. I, I don't know why I was Milton Pryor Bowser IV. Milton? No, Milton sure. Pryor Bowser IV I was born, just like uh, Muhammad Ali was, bo yes, was born, yes, Catches yeah. Clay. Right. And many of us at that time were influenced by the movement, you know, the civil sure. rights movement, the cultural nationalist movement. And so um, that was something that uh, I thought was would empower me. And so when somebody asked me what my name meant, meant um, Mil Milton was from the mill town, I, so I wasn't that, and Bowser was whatever that was in, in his German ancestry, I wasn't that anymore. And Pryor was the first, so I was the first person to mill town from somewhere. And um, so anyway, that particular influence, um, again, civil rights, Malcolm, you know, other people, you know. And, and dancers at that time, other than you know? Chuck, who, who are the dancers that uh, who influenced you? Joan Miller, as I sp spoke to spoke to you about. Right. Chuck Davis, um, Louis Falco, Juan Antonio, Paul Sensardo, uh, Fred Benjamin, Lee Ako Thompson, Nadine Ravine. Those are some uh, big, big, big names. There were big names at, at that point in time, right, right? Right. And and they are all ancestors now. All of them are now ancestors. And every year at Dance Africa, I acknowledge. Uh, the ancestors. We, uh, what I've contributed to Dance Africa, which is a little different than Baba Chuck, is every year I would do a memorial, mm -hmm. and I would do a different memorial, a different ballet, to acknowledge and give pay homage to those who came came before us. Yeah. Um, we're, we're we're almost out of time, but I, uh, I just want to yeah. get your. I'm, I hope you will come back, uh, and you know, bring your dancers here to our studio. You I, know, would, a few, I would. I would. I would love to do that. A few of them, anyway. Uh, but them. your your give us your assessment of where we are with. Black dance, its success, its acceptance, its, I mean, certainly the, the interest is, is there, there's the African influence. What do, you, what do you say to those who want to know what your thoughts are about our status? Heritage, uh, culture, um, and legacy are extremely important to us as a people. Um, it is the living book, the root of who we are that empowers us. Movement and motion is the father and mother, a mother and father of life. And dance is, is, is probably one of the highest arcs of that expression. So uh, for me, for members of Forces of Nature and everybody that's in my circle of influence, um, uh, our constant search in life uh, um, is to find ways to empower 
the community, you know, our people, the nation, and to do that with the language and movement of, of the arts and dance. It is where we will make it. It, wow. will, it will become what we desire it to be, and the work that we put into it will lift up the culture and lift us up as a people. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here today. Oh, right. I, no, my you pleasure. Know. My yeah. pleasure, Carol. You know, you look like family, you know. I know, you know I saying? know. We you do know. look alike. That's yeah. what we were talking about our Harlem roots, yeah, right? We, we, <laughs> we, we got that red bone thing, go, you know, going with us, right? You know. That, well, that is that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, that is it for us at this time. Thanks uh, to you for joining us. I'm Carol Jenkins. We want to thank our guest, Abdel Salam, Dance Africa's Artistic Director at Brooklyn Academy of Music and the Executive Artistic Director and co-founder of Forces of Nature Dance Theater. This program is Black America. We thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you the next time.